Hello, class. Well, this week involves the obligatory trip uh, to the Satire Museum, where we are confronted pretty early on uh, among the exhibits by Swift's A Modest Proposal. I'm going to propose modestly that I might uh, this time actually uh, produce <laughs> a short video which is shorter than 15 minutes or rather more exactly one that isn't struggling uh, to contain itself at the last minute in uh, within 15 minutes. Um, since uh, Swift's celebrated satire uh, invites one to consider, uh, because it is so savage, um, the whole history of satire and what satire is, uh, I should, in connection with what I was just saying, perhaps add that um, a kindly satire, what uh, uh, the academics generally might call a piece of Horatian satire uh, of my 50-minute uh, videos might feature me trying desperately to end uh, my, my <laughs> video <laughs> narration within 15 minutes and actually having it get longer and longer and um, I'm still apologizing as the video reaches uh, two hours in length. This would be a gentle kind of satire, uh, a more cruel satire I could imagine and I don't want to, <laughs> I don't want to put you up to it. Um, uh, if you uh, study the categories of satire, uh, it's an endless business, the history of satire, um, though I think what uh, is interesting about satire at this point is to consider uh, the, the, the history, uh, but also the bounds of satire and the purpose of satire. I think uh, that's what Swift's uh, uh, remarkable satire invites one to consider. So I will bet you that none of you, however devoted to literary categorization, will manage to make their way through uh, Wikipedia's uh, long uh, exposition of the history of satire and its division into various forms and kinds of satire which include the Horatian, the rather uh, gentle and kindly uh, 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 fun poking uh, and, uh, uh, and the juvenilian, uh, the, the, the somewhat more savage uh, expose uh, of uh, various uh, topics um, the larger, uh, the better, uh, satirizing a virtually unknown person like myself would be uh, only uh, amuse a very small number of people, but it might amuse a small and devoted number of people. And uh, I remember uh, the, a satire very kindly directed at myself, uh, which could only have possibly appealed to eight or nine people, was that after my first play, uh, was staged um, uh, and was well received, but uh, <laughs> which made it all the easier for the cast very kindly to poke fun at me. After the last night of the show, they invited me to stay on for a moment in the auditorium, where they then performed <laughs> a carefully rehearsed, I knew nothing of this, I was the director as well as the author in this case, but I had no idea what was going on, a carefully rehearsed a parody, a satirical parody of the play and the rehearsal process with which, with which they presented me. It was hilarious and terrifying because I sat there in the audience helpless with l tears of laughter uh, at knowing that th all this work had been entirely for me. There was no other audience. Um, an, an instance, and there are plenty of them in history, of a kind of private uh, satire. It was uh, the most flattering thing that's ever been done uh, in, for me in my writing life. So uh, I was 22. This was early uh, in my writing career. And they were mostly the same age. Um, so, uh, uh, so here we are, yes, consulting what is clearly a juvenilian satire by Swift. No one could say this was poking gentle fun. 
Um, so the history of satire, I will leave to you to unearth. It goes all the way back. There are ancient Egyptian papyri, um, uh, which may or may not be satire. They might or might not have been intended as serious consumption uh, or, uh, in, or intended as uh, uh, attacking by humor uh, and, not, and not seriously intended. And we go on into uh, Greek and Roman satire and into the long history uh, of uh, using uh, humor as, as a form of, of critique and as a form of attack. Uh, Horace's uh, satires were not meant to change uh, society but to make us laugh. Um, Juvenalian uh, Juvenal is the most wonderful author of, of satires. He's a delight, a delight to read as much now as he was at the time. Um, but satires like Swift's aren't expected by their author to change things overnight, but they are expected to linger long in the reader's mind. Um, Mod Modest Proposal is a uh, satire uh, like many, if not most, satires on two levels. Um, the uh, form that he uses, uh, uh, a pseudo-scientific uh, uh, report, is a satire itself on uh, the indifference that scientists show, the unawareness uh, of the moral values of what they're talking about when their aim is sim to be simply scientific. And so uh, what is satirized here is uh, scientific practice and its lack of moral tone, <laughs> its indifference to moral tone for the sake of truth. Of course, the subject is not a true one, uh, and thus we proceed to the second satire, which is to satirize um, British attitudes uh, to the consequences of poverty uh, and uh, of poverty resulting from British political practices. So uh, that is, that's the, the, the main thrust of it, uh, is uh, uh, juvenilian in its uh, uh, determination to uh, shock you and uh, um, uh, disgust you and alarm you and to uh, make you, if you are a Briton uh, of the period uh, at which and for which a modest proposal was written, your reaction would be disgust, uh, outrage, um, and, uh, and utter rejection of the implications of Swift's satire, uh, which uh, is clearly the horror of uh, colonial rule and the effects it can have upon the colonized. So uh, we've continued in that vein uh, without thereby, I think, changing the world in terms of, of famous satires. Um, and uh, Mark Twain is, is perhaps the leading American satirist. Uh, and as, as often happens uh, with uh, what is essentially a Horatian satire, which Huck Finn is um, it's not, it doesn't imp impose its way by brutal onslaught. Uh, uh, in fact, it, it hides uh, its mockery so subtly that people have endlessly over the years attacked Twain for a, a racism of which his book was a satire. Um, and this is a, a, a danger for, for uh, Horatian satirists uh, their mode of poking fun is so gentle that the result can be uh, uh, that they not only miss their target, but that they boomerang <laughs> their attack back on themselves. Um, So-called juvenilian uh, satire has no such risks. It's quite clear uh, that what is being proposed, in this case a modest proposal, which is the very opposite of modest, uh, is clearly not being seriously proposed, um, but intended to expose uh, a barbarity of which uh, it uh, targets the, uh, the British people and the British government are evidently uh, unaware and out of which they need to be shaken. So um, th that's a brief account of the history of satire. 
it, it might make you uh, uh, run or walk very, very slowly to uh, the work of both Horace and Juvenal. I recommend it. It took me there. Uh, I, as a result uh, of reading Swift, I, I did. I went and uh, uh, and read Horace, a wonderful writer, a writer to treasure, um, and and Juvenal as well, an extraordinarily brilliant uh, comic genius. I recommend them tremendously to you, uh, though I fear that uh, using uh, up your time uh, reading the, the great uh, Roman authors might um, might strike you as an incredibly fusty and obscure uh, and absurd enterprise. However, I think you might find it rewarding. So um, what we have instead is Swift. Uh, we have uh, his safety from um, the uh, consequences of being a satirist, which over the, the history of uh, satire have been many and frequent, um, from uh, Aristophanes onwards from uh, situations, uh, Aristophanes in ancient Greek with his satires, uh, from the earliest satires whose reception we know about, uh, it has often resulted in the satirist being punished severely. Um, Horace, I think not, um, but most of the great satirists have been endangering their freedom uh, or their purse or even their lives. Not so Swift, who, uh, like all Irish writers, took the privilege of, of their Irishness uh, uh, very seriously, uh, both as uh, classic victims of uh, colonial harshness and uh, uh, as, as uh, uh, men belonging to a separate and noble race uh, whose status should therefore um, uh, uh, exclude them from punishment by the, uh, the people they were attacking. I can see that uh, my both bold boast that I would make this a short <laughs> video is proving to be an idle boast. Self-satire uh, uh, is a, a, also an honorable tradition where you make fun of yourself. You are, after all, the person who knows best uh, your own failings, um, which are out there in public. And it also leads to the category which, uh, of which we have become increasingly fond in our society of being beyond sat satire. Uh, one of the problems of being a satirist in the age of Trump is what can you do that would so far exceed the excesses uh, of Trump and the Trump administration as to clearly constitute a satire and not really and not merely a feeble uh, a jest uh, which falls well short of the horrors of the original, of the thing it's trying to satirize. So the category beyond satire is one that's been most popular, um, and, and understandably so. How do you begin? Uh, there have not yet been, and maybe will never be, as many plays and books and films satirizing Trump as there might be because of the difficulty of outdoing the man. You have to outdo by a considerable distance Otherwise, to fall short of your target is to fail utterly, utterly as a satirist. Uh, Swift, in this particular piece we're reading, does not fall short, uh, because uh, wherever children, small children, babies are concerned, uh, the tenderness, the tender imagination uh, of people is engaged and horrified, as in this case, uh, by <laughs> the proposal that is immodestly made by our author. So just short of 15 minutes, I shall stop and leave you to it and leave you to consider uh, whether the purpose of satire uh, still has its, its edge uh, or whether time has actually blunted uh, satire by outdoing what any satirist could manage to satirize. Could anyone satirize Trump in a way that would cause the immediate alarm uh, caused by Swift in a modest proposal, please consider that and uh, even uh, tell me or draft for me, I shall put into the quiz the possibility, uh, what could a satirist of Trump say? It's worth a thought.
Thank you, my dear friends. <laughs>